In this episode, I will finally have the chance to present to you how you can stylize and limit your lightning in your characters. Two years ago, I uploaded this proof of concept and I hadn't had the time to really break it down for all of you. But in this video, we're going to quickly walk through how they limit some of the shadows and the reflections that you have here in Blender. We're going to re-simulate this shader specifically to work in Blender. So don't miss out because this episode is going to be fantastic. This is part of our stylized shading series in Blender from Grand Blue Fantasy and Guilty Gear styles that we have seen previously in this playlist. Hello and welcome to this new video. Long ago I published how could you stylize light inside Blender and the question back then before um, I really got into exploring all of these characters, all of these shaders. The, the question there was, how do you limit how you light surfaces without actually lighting surfaces? And the answer is through the factor light threshold, as we have seen in our previous videos. Every time I created a light threshold, I would always use the blue color. If you have been following the series, the Guilty Gear stylized shader series plus the Grand Blue Fantasy Versus shader in Blender, you'll see that every time I work with a light threshold I will use the blue light color. And the difference here, and this is where we're going to start explaining this shader, and the difference here is that we got our main material, in my case I'm just going to call it Zeta, that has been applied to the entire model. And this model has a vertex color property, which you can see if I uh, switch here to solid view, you can see these different colors, cyan and yellow, okay? Now, please remember, this is not uh, a tutorial to create a shader so that, you, so that you can export it back into Unreal. No, Unreal as well as Unity, they both have their own system to create shaders and materials. But once I finish exploring those concepts in Unity, I will do a video so that you can actually see how it will perform against other techniques. Now let's continue. We use that vertex color and then we want to separate that into RGB because I specifically would like to use the shadows and um, some of the regions that Seta has to limit the light. Now the way you see all of, all of these funky colors, it's because uh, I have applied normals right here they have out of smooth if I get this out blender is going to do its thing and then it's going to leave it like this but if you do that when you come back out here into the render time you're gonna get this kind of result so therefore if I activate that you can see there's some there's a much uh, subtle difference in the shading and I really like that okay so let's continue to explore this once we have the vertex color, we are going to separate it into the RGB channels. And from here, we're getting the vertex map shadow from the red channel, actually. Okay, this is basically to do, to do a conversion. And once we have that, we're going to feed that into our light threshold, our famous light threshold. So we insert that into a diffuse uh, BSDF, which is in turn going to be uh, switched with a shader to RGB. Shader to RGB, it's a switcher. To, to get physical light reactions into a pure color uh, thing. And then we are going to limit that with this color ramp, okay? And then that light threshold is going to be used as a color to be multiplied against the, the first things that we are going to separate, which is the hair, okay? So that's why you have uh, everything uh, labeled here, multiples, multiplies hair against vertex painted shadow, okay? so. We are also going to create a hair threshold limiter and that comes from the green channel as you can see the hair shadows come from the green channel from the ILM DDS okay this DDS format is very important because it's the, the scalable texture depending on the game okay but not to worry blender can read dot DDS stay tuned because we will continue to edit this shader after these messages and we're back don't forget that patrons are going to get all of these settings so they can explore it at their own time. So if you're considering becoming a patron, don't forget to visit patreon.com slash 3D TV for more information. So now we have the base color, which you already know. It's everything that uh, defines the color 
in Zeta and that is going to have connected uh, 2D Alpha, a transparent BSDF. Why do we have this? So that when you, um, let me select this, so when you have this, okay, you're going to be reading also the Alpha channel. Now, of course, there are ways to, to control this, and right now I have an additional Alpha connected, so that's why you don't see it, but when you get the original color, you're going to get all of these uh, parts that are not the skin uh, totally white, totally transparent. But when you interpret interpret um, the alpha with a with an empty transparent BSDF, then you get all your colors back. Now that's important because later on we're going to use that kind of property to isolate as a mask everything that is not skin, so that we can work with the shininess of the armor. And that is what I wanted to explain here. So I'm going to go a little bit faster so that you can get this uh, idea pretty clear. So the first thing we want to do is to get our color multiply against our SSS. As I mentioned in our previous videos from throughout the series, um, the SSS is not subsurface scatter. It is not, okay? It's meant to be used as a multiplier, as a shadow multiplier to the original color, okay? So that's what we do. And again, I got the original one, the original ones, uh, the original maps, and therefore they are transparent. Maybe on this one we can see it. Yeah, maybe we can see it. We multiplied the base color against the shadow right here. We use no factor threshold. And that is going to be connected all the way to the end until we get the result to separate the threshold plus the base and the highlights and the shadows. And the highlights and the shadows come from this map. This is the part that I wanted to really get into this video to explain how the armor glossiness, okay, and the highlights are going to be playing an important role for us to define the shininess of the armor. So let's get here. We know that if we, uh, let me see, if, yeah, right there. So if we go to the red channel from the ILM map, we're going to get in the red channel this interpretation. This in turn will define the glossy shader that we connected here so we can see the armor shininess that is going to be converted into pure color by using a shader to RGB. Apparently you don't see anything happening but now you can use this uh, physical shader into a color property and then finally we're going to limit with a color ramp. So now you're going to get a glossiness property that is going to react to the light Whatever it moves is going to shine. And then we're going to add that into this uh, base color that we already have from here. As you can see, this is the mask of the armor only, which is coming from the alpha. Remember, just a second ago, we talked about that everything that is not a skin was visible through this alpha from the base color. So that's what we're going to use as a factor, as a mask, if you can say it so. And then we're going to add that armor shininess plus the threshold that we already defined in our previous setup, like I explained at the beginning. And after we got that, we can finally mix it into the color of the things. And then we're going to use the uh, internal lines plus the detail lines. And we're going to get the detail lines from another yet another map, which is called the set, set of details, which is all of these little lines. You can see them everywhere. Now, this is very important. As you can see, I have already explained this technique and I apply it to every other model I create. And yes, it is important. It is important to define how your character looks in black and white. Whenever you hit a character design in black and white, you're going to really nail the the appeal to, to the 2D custom look. This one is also receiving a secondary map because you can see that we have a diffuse and a light map UV has the UV layout for this internal line. So we're going to multiply that from the, I think it was the ILM. The ILM alpha, yeah, has the lines. Okay, let's, let's check how that looks. See all of those things? Those are internal lines that have been drawn into the ILM alpha channel. Okay, the alpha in this case is not being used as the transparency channel, specifically on this ILM the alpha is storing information, black and white information, for this. This is another reason why I see so many of, of the shaders out there fail, because they think the alpha is going to be a transparency, and it's not, it's not doing that, that job. It's, it's working 
to get the internal line. So we're going to multiply the internal lines times the, the other lines that we had. If I can find it right here. Now, one of the things that I really would like to, to take your time and explore is everything that we have explained here because everything is labeled. Oh, here we go. So this is, um, um, here we go, the lines. Now they are multiplied against the colors and we already have the glossiness. And finally, we're going to multiply it once again to get the hair threshold because if you can see here, the threshold is, uh, I'm sorry, the highlight, it's not existing. But once we add that from the base color, and you will have the time to explore this yourself, you get if you get the, the file in Patreon, then you're going to see all of this become a wonderful shader. And then the final step for this is just a color correction. So as you can see, this is uh, much richer. This is kind of pale. This is just a tad richer in color, more saturated color. And why is that? Why do we want to do that? Um, because if you come here into the settings, the color management tab here on the render settings, the color management tab has to be set into um, view transform instead of filmic, switch it to standard. Okay. And this has a slight curve so we can pop the contrast and we can also do a little uh, saturation on the setup. Now that's important as well as the bloom. The bloom has also been uh, considered. I do not use a, a screen space reflection on this model, although you could if you want for the for the for the suit for the glossiness of the suit. You can activate that if you want. Um, ambient occlusion, not ambient occlusion. I'm not using that because as you can see, it kind of breaks some of the nice sharp patterns that I like to have for for. Um, for this kind of, of shading all right so that's set up guys uh girls gals thank you very much for watching this video and i hope that if you like it please consider subscribing uh, my name is pierre schiller i am a 3d animator and bfx compositor try blender blender is powerful and beyond industry compatible in the next episode, we're going to be talking about the Ewell Shader. You already know her. She's got magnificent combos. And I am also thinking about live streaming probably one of these shaders. It's probably going to be so easy. Hey, let me know if, if that's a good idea down here in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and follow me on these networks. Thank you so much.